Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, this is the fourth video in a multi-part series on how to make a WebEx web app based on the WebEx API. Now in the previous video, we saw how to use the Fetch API to make GET requests to a local file. Uh, but today we're gonna build on that. Uh, instead of fetching from a local file, we're gonna go ahead and make our API calls to the WebEx server. And because we'll be accessing an actual account, uh, live data from a WebEx account, uh, we'll need to include a personal access token for authorization. Okay, now uh, if you want to, you can follow along, but uh, you'll need to sign up for a WebEx account if you don't have one already. Uh, they're free, and uh, even though when you sign up it says something like uh, sign up for a 30-day trial or something like this, uh, if you go over that period, your account will still work. Uh, I think it's just the advanced features that expire, which uh, you may not even use. So, Anyway, you can go over to uh, developer.webex.com, and uh, there'll be a place for you to sign in here uh, in the top right-hand corner. I'm already logged in, so you can't see it. Uh, but then uh, once you're all set up, you can just go to the documentation and then getting started. Now, uh, this kind of gives you an overview of the platform and, of course, how to get started. And then once you know what you want your app to do, uh, you'll just need to test some of your endpoints. So, for example, today we're just going to write a simple app that lists the rooms that I've joined. So to see what's needed for that, We'll look under the API reference here, then we'll scroll down and select rooms. Now here it's going to tell us a little bit about what rooms are and uh, the different methods that are possible. So uh, you can send get request, uh, post, put, and delete. And then of course a description about what each one does. So again for today uh, all we want to do is list our rooms in our app. Okay, very simple. So this is going to be the URL that we're going to use uh, to send our request to. Now, if you click it, you can see a list of parameters that you can add to sort of narrow down your results. So, for example, by adding a team ID or type or whatever, it'll return only those rooms that match those parameters. Or uh, you can just leave them off and you'll get back a full list of all of the spaces that you belong to. And what's really nice is that uh, we have a place to test it here. So if I just go ahead and click Run down here, we can see that it'll return a JSON array uh, with the details of all the rooms that I'm currently in. And by the way, even though we're just testing things here, uh, this is live data. These are my actual rooms at this moment uh, because I'm logged in here as Collab Crush. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we need a way to authorize our request. So you can do that with this personal access token up here. Now this token is just for development purposes, so you don't want to use it in a real environment, but uh, it'll work for what we're doing here today. Okay, so let's go ahead and start writing some code. And I'm in VS Code here, and I'm in a folder called Get Example, and I have a blank HTML file here. Again, I can set some boilerplate code here by typing in exclamation and then tab. And then I'll go ahead and title this, uh, let's see, uh, get example. Let's go ahead and save that. Then we'll open up live server. And I've already got the console open here, so we're ready to go. So uh, we're going to start off by making a button. This part's the same as in the previous video, except uh, let's give this an ID of get rooms. And then we'll call the button uh, get rooms as well. Okay, let's drop in a line break. And just as before, let's create a div tag here with an ID of output. And of course, we'll leave that empty for now so that we can uh, generate the output dynamically. Okay, now let's uh, create our script tags. And then we'll need an event listener. So let's go document get element by ID. And this time the ID is get rooms. And we'll add an event listener. And of course we're listening for a click event. And then we'll call a function called get rooms. Okay. So let's go ahead and create that function. Get rooms. And just to make sure we're on track, uh, let's go ahead and console log that. We'll say button works. Okay, I'll save that. Click the button. Eh, ah, let me switch over to the log here. And we get button works. Great, so we're going to call the fetch function here. And uh, instead of using the file name as we did before, 
we're going to go ahead and paste in the URL uh, for the rooms that we got from the WebEx developer site. Okay, so come in here, click rooms, copy that. Oops, got a little bit more than I bargained for. Let me delete that. There we go. Okay, now in the previous video, we were able to just go ahead and add our dot then uh, like this. But since we need to deal with authorization, we need uh, to add a header first. So uh, this is going to take in a second parameter here. And then uh, this is going to take an object. Now, first we need to specify the method, which in this case is get. Okay, then we need to add the headers. And then here we can specify the content type, uh, which is application, JSON, and then authorization. Now here, uh, instead of using single quotes, I'm gonna use backticks again so that I can drop in a variable. So first we'll say bearer. Now that's our uh, for our bearer token. And then we'll do a dollar sign with two curly brackets. And then inside here, we'll say token, like that. Now, we haven't created this variable yet, uh, so let's go ahead and do that before I forget. So uh, let's come up here, and we'll say token equal, and then we can go back to the developer page and copy the token. Then we'll just go ahead and paste it in here. There, that looks a lot cleaner like that. Now don't get too excited. This uh, token is gonna expire after 12 hours or uh, whenever I log out, uh, which is gonna be well before anyone watches this video. So, all right, now that we've uh, got our headers in place, we can go ahead now and do our dot then, like we did in our previous video. So we'll say dot then, and then remember this takes a function and we want to pass in our response and we can just use res. Then we want to return our response. Now once we have the response, we want to add another dot then, and this will also take a function. And here we'll pass in our data. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and console log this so we can see where we're at so far. Okay, uh, console log. I'll save, click the button. Now the first thing to notice here, uh, the name of our array that we're getting back here is items. Now uh, we'll need to take note of that uh, because remember in the previous video, we were able to name our array uh, that was superheroes. Now, if you look at these, uh, this is the exact same array that we got back uh, from the developer page. And just to show you that this is live data, I'm gonna go into my WebEx Teams client here. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna click this little plus button. Then we'll create a space and we'll call it um, uh, fetch get demo. Click create. Now we'll go back to the page, save it. Click the button. And somewhere down here, there, there's our fetch get demo room. Okay, so let's see about displaying this on the page though. So uh, let's get rid of that. And we're going to go ahead and set our output variable here, just like we did in the last video, and uh, we'll leave that empty. Okay, then we'll create our for loop. So we'll say i equals zero. And so long as i is less than the length of our array. And remember, our array now is called items. We'll increment by one. Okay, now we can append to our output variable. And uh, then once again, we'll use backticks so that we can drop in some HTML. And let's start off with some UL tags. Then a list tag. Then we'll add our dollar sign 
and curly brackets, and then a closing list tag. Okay, so here we need to decide, you know, what data do we want to display on our page? So if we look at one of these objects down here, we can see, uh, we can display, say, the date and time, the rooms created, uh, the creator and ID, uh, which doesn't seem to be very helpful, but uh, lots of information there. So, okay, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, let's add the date and time that it was added and the name of the room which we can get with title. Just those two, that should be good enough. Okay, so inside these curly brackets, we'll say data.items, and then we'll need a pair of square brackets because uh, items is our array. And then we'll use our i variable to iterate through the list, and then we'll say created, because created over here is gonna give us the date and time that it was created. Okay, let's copy and paste that one more time. And then if we look over here, we can see that title is going to give us the name of the room. Okay, now let's go outside of our loop and we'll say uh, document.getElementById. the ID of our div tag where we're sending this, then we'll set our inner HTML equal to our output variable. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Uh, click the button. And there's our list of WebEx rooms. And just to show you, uh, let's go back into our WebEx client and create another room. Let's say, um, Let's say uh, collab crush room three. Okay, so we can see it's created here. It's part of our list of rooms. Uh, then we'll go back to our app, save it, click the button again, and then we can see the room that we just created, uh, collab crush room three. Okay, so that's fetching uh, JSON data from a WebEx server. Uh, next time we're going to learn how to post data on the server, and again, this adds a little bit more complexity to our code, so of course we'll have to save that for a separate video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.